Hey guys, um, it is Tuesday night and I am coming live. So if you guys are here with us tonight, let us know that you are here. It is warm again in the garage, yay, of course. And um, so I am working on a client's table here. So I was going to just come live and kind of show you guys what we're doing. If you are here with me, let me know you're here so that I can say hello and um, we will get rolling on this um, oak table. So I'm working on a solid oak claw foot table tonight. And um, so my client wanted it painted in the fluff at the bottom, which is the farmhouse, kind of farmhousey white. And then also the top is going to be in the gravel road. So that's what we're painting this in. I did work on it. This did have a slight repair that needed to be made at the base of this piece. So um, I have done that earlier already, done that, and I put my first coat of fluff on the bottom of this. So someone's with us. Hey Tommy, how are you? And uh, thank you for being with us tonight. This light is kind of like going to blind me. So let me see if I can kind of move that a little bit so it's not like shining right in my face makes it hard for me to see so um, yes I am working on this oak table it is rather warm although they say that we are actually going to have cooler weather this weekend I'm hoping that's the case because it's warm outside so which means it's warm in my work area so um, yeah I have prepped always prep my pieces you guys know that I always start with my white lightning cleaner clean my piece really well and then I lightly sand my piece even though Dixie Bell does not require that you sand your pieces it's just a reassurance if you will for me that I sand my pieces I always sand my piece I don't skip it now I'm not sanding it down to the bare wood but I am scuffing off any type of um, shine or sheen that might be on the piece so if you see a shine or something like that on your piece, you want to knock that down. Just remember the pro the, it, it's um, the progress is in the process, if you will. So I always um, do the process. So that's how I get the best results with my work. So someone else is here with us. Hey Jennifer, hope you are doing well. So um, yeah, that's my my. Um, my way of doing it I always clean my pieces really well then I lightly sand my pieces then I clean my pieces again I hope that lighting is not like interfering with us it kind of is me but maybe not you guys so much so um so clean it sand it lightly and clean it again so I did those steps um, and I will take the phone down so that you guys can kind of see with the camera what the base of this is it's a claw foot solid oak dining table with a leaf in it so when i do these and i want to just kind of turn you down so that you guys can see what i am working on so this is the claw foot table that i'm working on and um hey cheryl hope you're well i'm gonna cut through here so i'm just gonna kind of take you uh, on the bottom level of course you're going to be able to see outside here so this is the base um, so that's the claw foot part. As you can see, I have been working on it and um, have sanded, cleaned. I did a repair on the bottom as well. And that is the first coat of fluff on there. I will be distressing um, as well on this piece from um, what my client wants. So, so this is what I'm working on. And what I'm going to do tonight is just kind of try to get you guys to where you can see. So as you can see, this is the big leaf in it. It's a pretty good sized table um, with all my other furniture in here is about all we can fill up in here. As you can see, I'm kind of maxed out. I'm trying to get this just a little higher, this little tripod. It's not the greatest and I apologize. I know it's kind of crooked there. If I let go of it, will it stay? Hopefully. So as you can see, you can tell that I have lightly sanded this. You don't see a big shine on it. That's what I'm talking about when it comes to um, getting your piece ready. So there are two ways that you can go about putting this, and I have prepped it so she is ready for me to do. You can use a sponge, and you can just drag your paint across your piece, 
or you can brush it on. On this first coat, I believe um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll thin my first coat of paint and I will put it on with a sponge and you can just drag it across here almost like a stain and let it kind of get in your piece. Or you can use your little brush and you can brush the paint onto your, onto your piece. So I'm just kind of making sure, make sure you have nice clean hands, make sure there's no dust or debris or anything like this. Because it is a large table and I'm a short stopper, I'm going to have to go way out and back to kind of get that and not get it on me. You see, I can't hardly reach all the way across that table and especially here in the center. So um, a lot of times you can take your middle piece out and, you know, push the other two together and go ahead and paint that. A lot of times I don't like to do that because sometimes, depending on the paint you use, now I'm pretty fortunate because I use Dixie Belle chalk paint, but some paints you will have a dry, you'll have a, de a different color between the two pieces, between your, your um, what do they call these, your leaf and the rest of your table, and I don't really want that. So I try to be really careful how I go about putting that on. And... Um, so, a lot of times it may be easier to come along in here and um, take your sponge because you can kind of drag it across and then back and then you can kind of go halfway and then meet it the other so that you don't have a dry line, which is kind of the hard, the hard part when you work with a little bit larger pieces like this because you can't quite, don't have the wingspan, if you will, to get all the way across your piece. Um, and if you could flip them on their side, that might would make it easier so you're painting up and down. But um, this tabletop is just actually setting on the base because I did haul it here and I hauled it in separate pieces. So I hauled this piece and then the top piece and then the bottom piece to get it in and to get working on it for my client. So um, obviously I want to turn out the best, the best I can get it to turn out. So you can see where I did the skirting here. I did that in the fluff as well. So it's gonna come right up and this is gonna be your dark gray. So like I said, there's two ways you can pull that off. You can either paint it with your brush. Um, a lot of times what your brush does is it gives some furniture, say if this was Famica top, I could have put my slick stick on this and then I could have come in with my brush and put the slick stick on which would create a kind of a wood grain effect so it would kind of fake the fact that it was um even though it was a famica it would look like it had wood grain because i would use the brush which would give it the the grain sort of a grain effect on your piece so that's another little trick if you're working with a famica top which obviously i am not obviously i'm working with um, a real oak solid oak table here so um, I won't need to be doing that. So, um, so that's what I thought I'd come to show you guys tonight, working on this table and the two different ways that you can pull that off. So um, like I say, one way is to just take your sponge. You can, oh, I almost think our sponges will fit in there, but I also have um, a little tray. A lot of times I will just pull my paint and um, let me grab little I use these a lot I just get little plates and if you're going to use your sponge which I'll probably do tonight just for um, showing you guys because this is wood grain I don't need to try and create any effect there is to dampen your sponge you always want to start with a damp sponge or a damp brush that is kind of key you always start with a damp uh, product because we're working with chalk paint and all I'm doing is kind of looking to see what I did with my mister bottle and I know I was using it earlier today so let me get that real quick so that's just kind of the process I use when I am working on my pieces um, just kind of assess what's the easiest uh, to get over and around your bigger pieces let me grab that. 
So I've got my little mister bottle here. I do have that I want to get my sponge damp. If you're with us, say hello so we can say hello to you guys. And so I always start with a damp sponge. This is a brand new one as well, so we won't have any shedding or anything like that. It takes quite a while for these uh, sponges to uh, start that shedding process if they do. I know some people have had issues with that. So far, I have not. If I see any flakes or anything coming off of my sponge, then I retire my sponge. And um, let me see here real quick. Pardon me. And if you are going to use a sponge application, you will probably want to wear a glove because when you're holding it, you're most likely to get it up under your fingernails or something like that. So I'm just gonna kind of start this process. So you guys can see, I'm using a fresh can of Gravel Road by Dixie Bell. So it's a really pretty, it's gonna be a nice little farmhouse style. We will be distressing it as well to prepare it. I'm just going to put this on, show you guys how we use our sponge. I think I've showed you guys a few times, but a lot of times when I use a sponge, I use it for gator hide. So, and that's a top coat. So normally in applying a top coat, but this is water-based paint. So you can wash your sponge out and use it multiple times. So the camera is not going to be focused on me really. It's just going to be on the work so you guys can see how we go across this larger area. So I will go from here probably to the center as far as I can reach and then come back over and meet it. So if you see that you are missing some areas, don't try to go back and hit those areas. Let the whole thing dry and come in with a second coat. That's always kind of best. So let me see if I can set us up on a little higher, just a little bit higher. What do I have here? So you guys can kind of see the whole process rather than just kind of looking down. Just give me one second here. Set something up here so that we can get, I have my baby wipes handy because you guys know I'm always using my baby wipes. And I got everything kind of sitting on my vanity that I've been working on, which she's gonna be debuting soon. Let me just bring y'all up here. Maybe that'll give us a little bit better view. So hopefully, 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 it'll be a little bit better view on what we're working on here. And that way you guys might can see. Mm, I think it's working pretty good. Hey, Kayla, how are you? Oops, sorry. Trying to work this little tiny tripod that I have here. So I'm gonna kind of demonstrate to you guys how I manage to do a larger piece and I'm gonna bring my camera up slightly. I've got a little tripod and it's a little bobbly, so I apologize for the bobble. Hopefully I'm not making anybody sick there. So hopefully you guys can see this is my client's table. She did buy this table at Cooper's Vintage Village and um, she approached me while I was working on some tables last Saturday for uh, my other client and um, wanted us to jump in here and get this painted for her and she wants it in the farmhouse style. So again, we went on the bottom of this piece is in fluff and the top of this piece we're doing a gravel road. So um, that is what I'm gonna do tonight. Now when I first start, I always start with a damp sponge, which is what I told you guys earlier. I do not miss my piece just yet. When I um, miss my piece is when I start putting on the second coat. So on the first coat, I go straight paint, straight from the can or on my plate is what I normally do so I don't get anything in my paint and dirty it up. I wanna keep my paint clean. And um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get started here and we are gonna paint this, this one and I'm actually gonna do it with a sponge to kind of show you guys if you haven't used a sponge, how they work versus using a brush. I do, however, keep a brush handy because as you can see, I do have a leaf here. When I'm painting in between here, I don't want a bunch of drips down onto my fluff paint that is underneath this. So do keep your, 
your uh, little brush handy. Again, I always mist everything, keep them damp because we're working with chalk paint and water-based paint. We wanna keep our products damp. So, um, and I always use um, a little paper plate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started and show you guys because we're always coming live Tuesday, Thursday nights, eight o'clock. Um, we try to do that on a regular basis. So I'm just gonna get me some paint here. And we're just painting the top of this table with our um, gravel road. Because the bottom of this table has already been painted in the fluff. Its first coat is on. Now we'll be putting on the top first coat on here. Our client may even be watching us tonight, I'm not sure. So I'm gonna be working on her piece so I take my sponge, as you guys can see, let me come forward so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. So this is our paint. I take that sponge and I drag it off so I don't have a lot of paint on my sponge. And this is how we start to apply. So that's kind of what I do, I'm trying to get a feel for it. And you can start on the side or you can start in the center. It's totally up to you how you want to do it. I believe I'm going to start here and I'm just going to take my sponge and drag it across. So this is going to be just a very thin first coat because again it is a first coat and it is a solid. And I do have my fan running, that's what y'all are hearing. I did prep this piece however guys, I did clean this really well with the white lightning cleaner and then I uh, sanded it, and now, then I cleaned it again, because I don't want any sanding dust between my paint and my piece. So I'm just gonna get a nice thin coat. A lot of times I use our paint as a stain, so you can thin your paint. You can see how pretty much easy it's going on. I'm not putting it on thick, it's just a first coat. So I'm just gonna put her on thin. Just get it on. And like I said, if you see that you've missed a couple of spots or whatever, don't go back over it because you don't want to pull your paint back off. It is chalk paint, so it is it does dry relatively quickly and it will pull your paint back. So you don't want to pull it back. You just want to leave it and just keep continuing on. This is the same process that I use when I put our top coats on. So if I was putting gator hide on, it's the same process. So I'm just gonna put a nice thin coat on. I don't know if you guys can kind of see that. Now I'm just gonna come along this edge. With the sponge, you're less likely, you're less likely to um, have a bunch of drips. So that's kind of a plus. And I'm gonna walk around, so I apologize if I Put my back to you while I walk around. It's a rather large table. And I do have my door open because it is hot. I hope no creepy crawlies come in on me. No copperheads, that's a big one. Don't want any copperheads. So that basically is your first coat. This is your tricky centerpiece. Obviously it's gonna be trickier because it is bigger. So it's longer. So you can take it out and just set it up on the wall and do it that way. Um, and that might be an easier approach for, for some of you, however you want to do it. So a lot of times, I'm just going to reach as far as I can and drag it. But because I'm short, I don't have a long arm span. You can kind of see, I'm gonna walk over, and I apologize for walking in your view, because I'm gonna bring these together on this end. So you can see the wood grain underneath this piece, and obviously I'm gonna need more paint. So this is the process if you're using a sponge applicator for paint. It's the very same process that you would use 
um, for our top coats. Very same. And I take my, my sponge and I apply it the same way I would be applying my paint uh, with a brush because the, I stay with the grain. It's very important to kind of stay with the grain. Don't be all over your piece. Just kind of stay with the grain and um, you just get better results that way. Always kind of look at the table or whatever piece you're working on. And just kind of keep your focus on going with the grain of your, your project. So again, I gotta come over here. Because I'm working with chalk paint, I'm moving rather quickly. Um, then you don't have as likely to have some dry spots. So, it's relatively quick. People, a lot of people say you are fast at painting. Well, when I use a sponge, it's pretty quick. If I were brushing this on, it would take a little bit longer. And when I come in here on my second coat, I will be using um, my spray, my Mr. Bottle. So I will miss my paint. As you can see, a lot of times we'll leave it almost like this to where you see the green underneath of it. But um, in this case, I'm not going to. I'm going to paint the whole table the farmhouse style because that's what my client's wanting. So, this is how we, this is how I get her, get my pieces accomplished. And as you see with the sponge, I'm not dripping down onto my paint underneath because I get pretty good coverage that way. And I'm short, so I have to go apologize with my back to you guys because I'm going to go across. It's best if you can go all the way across all in one swoop, which obviously I couldn't do there because I'm not, I'm not long enough, you know, set that where I don't knock it off. So I'm just coming in and applying paint with a sponge. And a lot of people, you know, they're like, oh, how do you do that? Dixie Bell makes it easy because we have great products to work with. So. This is just how they get accomplished. You guys can see I've got stuff covered in here that's been sitting in here for a while now. Everybody should be good and cured, but I still got them tucked away. I have not pulled them out to um, put them on uh, for sale yet as everybody's kind of curing. So pretty much, I'm not gonna touch that, Pretty much you see I got one coat on here. It's this quick. Now I'm gonna come in on the sides. Use what's on my sponge. Now if I was the type that liked to see some grain through my paint, which even makes it to me a little more farmhousey, um, I might leave it like that. But not everybody, you know, is into the grain showing. And this, like I say, will be distressed when I am done. So again, I apologize for getting in your view. Try not to, got so many pieces in the garage right now we're being worked on that is how you can get, and you would think when you're dragging this sponge over this wood that you would think that it would rough up your sponge or tear your sponge or rip your sponge. These are amazing sponges. And I'll bring it to you guys so you guys can see. So you can see on this sponge that nothing is ripped or torn. That's just the paint on there. Now I will wash this out because this is water-based. So no reason not to wash out my sponge. And I will wash out my sponge and most likely um, I'm going to stick with the same process that I did on this piece, which um, obviously I just used the sponge and showed you guys how you could do this whole entire table. And I don't know how long have I been on here? Probably mm, 10 minutes at the most. And I've got one coat coverage on here. Yes, it's thin. Yes, I can see through it. But when I come out here um, tomorrow, I will let this dry overnight 
and then tomorrow I will come out here first thing in the morning most likely because I'm always running the gauntlet trying to get things done I will come out first thing and um, put another coat on here and let it sit but when I do come out to put that second coat on I will use my mister and I will lightly mist my piece but most likely I will continue with the sponge application instead of the brush because it's not leaving as many brush strokes so if you don't want a lot of brush strokes and you still want um, to use paint don't worry um, you can always go grab a sponge and still paint with a sponge it's it's kind of cool how easy it is and also don't forget that you can use um, the paints the chalk paint Dixie Bell's chalk paint you can water it down you can thin it and then um, apply it if you did strip your top, you can still come in and apply it like a um, like a thin uh, stain. So, but actually, it's paint. So, basically, that's what we were coming live tonight to show you guys. And um, we try to be faithful about coming live now. Next, well, actually, it's this Thursday at um, eight o'clock. We are actually not going to be live on our Facebook page. We're going to be live on Dixie Bell. We're we're teaching that class for them that night so you guys can jump over there on Dixie Bell's uh, main page and you will be able to see our uh, workshop over there and what we will be working on so um, I'm not going to hold you guys up just want to show you a quick tip on how to apply uh, paint versus your stain and being able to do it with a sponge versus a brush so that's all we're doing tonight so we hope you all have a blessed evening we thank you for jumping on with us and sharing and, and seeing um, our videos and um, we will be posting more pictures as we go along as we start to complete the process of this as you guys can see this is touchable dry now because it's chalk paint but um, do let it set overnight before you do attempt to put on your second coat because of the fact if it is still damp and you go to put on, even though I could be overzealous right now and come in and say, oh, this is dry, let's go ahead. If you do that, there's a good possibility that when you go to put your second coat on, not being completely cure underneath, it could pull your paint back off and you don't want to do that. So just let her sit overnight, come back out the next day, and continue on with your process. Just give it time to get some curing on before you go forward. Once you do that, get your next coat on, normally a couple of coats. If you're applying with a sponge, if you applied with a brush, most likely I could have got one coat coverage on this, but I'm, I'm doing this a little different process just for video and for um, lives to teach you guys what we do. and. Um, once that's cured, you got your coats on, then you come in with your gator hide, which is what I'm going to put over the top of this because I know it's a table. I know that tables get abused when we use them around the kitchen. So um, people are going to put hot coffee, they're going to put hot plates, and things are going to tip over and spill. Don't waste your time without getting a good top coat. So be sure and put you a good top coat on. In my case, because I use Dixie Bell products, I will be using the Gator Hide on the top of this. That gives me the reassurance that my client is going to be um, very uh, thrilled with the results knowing that her table is not going to get uh, water damage or stain or anything of that nature once it's painted. So that's just a process, you guys. Um, we will um, continue those tutorials later on. We'll show you this uh, project after it's complete. We'll post photos so you guys can see how that's done. So thank you for coming on live with us tonight. We appreciate you stopping in. Hope you have a blessed evening and we will chat at you on Thursday. Have a blessed night. Bye-bye.